Well, hello, grade 12s. I'm so impressed that you don't need any of my help. Um, so very good. Let's move on. Okay, so um, I'm going to warn you before you do any of the homework this week that uh, um, some of the answers in the back of the textbook in this particular homework assignment for electric potential are incorrect. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure about the online textbook, but I know that the physical copy of the textbook that we have had incorrect answers in it. Uh, not not all of them, but there were enough that it's annoying. So um, I'm going to show you how to do these things. And um, yeah, I mean, really, it's just about using the right formula at the right time. So that's what this is all about. And I'm just going to, um, it, it's called electric potential, but you and I can call it voltage, if you like. So let's get right to it. I'm kind of to do this in a, a different room than I'm used to, so I'm kind of uncomfortable here, but I'll here. I'll try to do the best with my handwriting. All right, so what I'm gonna do is compare what we've been doing so far. Okay. So I'm gonna compare it with gravity, okay? Okay, so, and again, excuse my handwriting, it's just, it's going to be a bit rough, okay, in that position I'm in here. Okay, so with gravity, I just want to remind you, and we're talking universal gravitation, okay, that the force of gravity um, is the constant G, M1, M2, over R squared, and the electric force is the constant K, Q1, Q2 over r squared, okay? So we talked about that already, moving on. All right, we never really did this for gravity, okay? But the gravitational field intensity, if you just think of it logically, would be the gravitational force divided by a test mass, okay? Or if you like, it's per kilogram, and it would equal g m2 over r squared, and m2 would be the mass of the planet or whatever it is you're testing the gravity around. Okay, now for the electric field intensity, I'm sorry, it's the electric force divided by Q1, and that's equal to KQ2 over R squared, okay, and Q2 is the charge you're testing around, like say it's the Van der Graaff machine or something like that, okay, and Q1 is gone, Q1 is the positive test charge, so I'm going to say Q1 equals positive test charge. Here, M1, mass can't be negative or positive, so it's just your test mass. Okay, you know, put a little line down here. All right, so that's gravity, that's electric, that's what we've learned so far. Well, now let's get to energy. Energy, okay, gravitational energy in the universe is G, this is from the last unit, M1, M2, and it's 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Well, that formula comes from calculus. It's the area under a force versus R curve. Well, since force varies the same, it varies with the inverse square of radius here, you're going to get the exact same result here, where the electric potential energy is K Q1 Q2 times 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Okay? So you can see like here how similar these two things are, okay? Now, uh, the binding energy, that's when R2 approaches infinity, okay? We ended up getting G M1 M2 over R1, okay? And R2 approaches infinity. Here, we don't call it binding energy with electricity, guys, because two positive charges, for example, are not bound together. They repel each other, okay? Gravity binds things together because it's an attractive force, but electric forces can be attractive. So if you had a negative and a positive, it'd be kind of like binding energy, but it could also be repulsive. So when it's repulsive, it's not really right to say it's binding energy, okay? But this here, I'll call it, well, you know what? I, I don't know how they call it here. Um, well, you know what? I'll call it binding. 
Okay, the logic works the same, like this. Okay, but this is not necessarily um, a binding. Okay, so it's not if it's opposite charges. If Q1 and Q2 are opposite, they attract, right? And therefore, they're bound. Yeah, Ben, I'm I'm doing notes. Okay. If Q1 and Q2 are alike, um, they're not bound. Okay, and what that formula tells you then, oh, pardon me, what that formula tells you is how much energy it takes to bring two opposite charges together from a great distance. Because they repel, it takes work to bring them together if they repel, okay? So if it's attractive, if they're opposite charges, this formula here tells you how much energy it's gonna cost you to separate them to a very large distance. But if they're repulsive, then it tells you how much energy, not to separate, but how much energy it takes to bring them together from a very large distance because the potential would increase as you get closer and closer and closer together. Unlike with gravity where it decreases when they get closer, here it increases when they get closer if the charges are alike. So if they're the same kind of charge, both positive or both negative, okay? All right, now, there's more to electricity than what I've written here. Gravity, we're gonna stop there. That's all we've learned about gravity, right? But with electric forces and electric energy, the story continues. There's this thing called voltage. And there's really no equivalent in gravitation. If there was, it would be the energy per unit mass. Okay, but we don't really have a name for that. So forget that, You'll never, I've never seen that in my life. Okay, and I've done a lot of physics. So, uh, so there's no equivalent with gravity. But voltage, the definition of voltage, and I'll put a V with a capital sign, Okay, these, that's my way of saying it's a capital V, so you don't think it's speed in the formula, because there are two Vs, right? Little v means speed, like one half mv squared for kinetic energy speed. That's a little, that's a lowercase v, right? The uh, uppercase v means voltage, and I put these little hats on it so that you can tell the difference between those two letters. Okay, the definition of voltage is the energy, electrical energy, per unit charge. It's almost like the equivalent of the field intensity where it's the force per unit charge, but this time it's the energy per unit charge. And Q1 is a positive test charge again, right? So Q1 is our positive test charge. Now just let me talk to you for a moment about the units. The units, you probably guess are volts, but what is a volt? Well, we can see here that the unit of energy is a joule. The unit of charge is coulomb. So a joule per coulomb is equal to a volt. And from now on, we'll just use the capital V to represent volts. So this is a, one of those weird cases where the variable we use and the unit of measurement is the same letter, okay? So I can't really think of other examples of that. Well, I guess, yeah, no. I mean, everything is everything has different letters except for voltage. We use capital V for the unit of volts, and also for the variable we use capital V. All right, so that's the definition of voltage. Now that can be applied to any of these other formula up here that you see. Okay, so I'll call this one formula one here, and this one's formula two for energy. So one of them is when you get a change in potential when an object's moving around. Okay. And the other one is from a great distance. If you bring in an object from a great distance, what's the potential? Energy, okay? So voltage, you're just gonna take those two formulas and divide it by Q1. So therefore, your change in voltage, and I'm gonna write this like this, it'd be KQ2 times one over R1 minus one over R2, okay? So, this is for point charges, okay? Um, 
where Q2 is a point charge. Okay. Now, in almost all the questions, you don't use this formula. You almost always use this formula, which is like, you know, if you want to call it the binding voltage, it's going to be KQ2 over R1. Okay. Where again, Okay, again it's a point charge and R2 approaches infinity. Now they don't tell you that R2 approaches infinity, I'm just going to tell you. But in most of the questions you're going to see in the homework, that's what's happening. Okay, so if you like, we've really got four different formula here that are new. We'll call this one three and we'll call this one four, but really they're very much like one and two. We're just dividing out the Q1. Okay, so anyway, that's voltage. All right, so that's the lesson for today. Um, and you're good to do the homework, right? You don't need any examples. <laughs> I'm just going to say note before I give some. Of course, I'll give you some examples. Note. Um, energy and voltage are scalars. They are scalars. Okay. Um, but they can be negative. They don't have direction. They can be negative when there are losses. Okay? So you can lose energy and get a negative, like you, you lost 10 joules, so it's neg the energy could be 10 joules, negative 10. It doesn't mean anything to do with any direction, it just means that you lost something. Okay? All right, so I'm, I'm going to warn you this homework is a bit confusing, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another note here. If the words in the question say potential energy, so if you see the word energy, this word is crucial. If you see the word energy, that means use the formula for the electric potential or the binding energy as stated. Okay. However, if the words instead are just the word potential, and most of the questions are like this, and I'm going to say no energy mentioned just the word potential is mentioned, okay? So this word alone means every single time voltage, okay? So in other words, the word voltage and the word electric potential, remember, we're not saying the word energy, but it's energy per unit charge, so they're, obviously they're connected, but the word potential by itself always means voltage, okay? If the word energy is used, it means energy, of course. But if the word potential is used without the word energy, this means voltage. And I think the book does that every single time. They don't ask for voltage. They just ask for, quote, potential. All right. <laughs> it's a busy house today. So uh, with that in mind, let me give you a couple of questions. And I hope this will clear up some of the homework. Some of these questions are so easy, um, you know, that, here, I'm just going to go from memory and do a sampling of the textbook. So let's say it takes five joules to move a two coulomb charge across a field, an electric field. Okay, let's say it takes that. Then, okay, um, what is your voltage? Okay, what is V? Okay, and they're going to use the word potential. Okay, and what you have to do with that is go like this. The voltage is just simply equal to the electric energy per unit of charge, which is equal to 5 divided by 2 or 2.5 volts. 
Okay, piece of cake. And by the way, my my son is in university. He just walked in here, and uh, I know from looking at his homework last semester. And this is for you, Deborah. The software engineering homework they did definitely did exactly what we're doing here. Okay, um, so you will see this first year university. Okay, physics. All right, so. Um, Question B, okay? Uh, let's say, I'm gonna include a diagram this time. Right, Ben, electricity? Yeah. Semester two? Yeah. Where's, I my hat. I have not seen your hat. Oh, there, that's right here. Well, Ben, I'm not looking for your hat. Yeah, well, it was right in front of you. Well, I'm not looking. <laughs> All right, so. Now that the hat is out of the way, isn't it fun, guys, just being with your families all the time? <laughs> and actually, I, I'm kind of surprised. We're actually getting along pretty well, all things considered, because we're just stuck. We're joined together in time and space in this pandemic, and it's uh, it has its ups and downs, but it's it's been all right. We've learned to give each other space when we need to. All right, so look. Um, Let's say this is your charge that's on the Van Graaff machine, okay? And then you get this question that says, all right, um, this first distance, here I'll use a different color because let's say the distance from the center of that charge here is, I don't know, let's make it 45 centimeters. And then I'm going to use a different color for the, di the other distance. Um, let's say our distance way out here to this guy from the center, okay, is, uh, let's make it 55 centimeters. It really doesn't matter, honestly. Okay, now the question is, what is the, let's say you're going from, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a little weird, the R1 and R2 thing. Let me just say that R2 is always the bigger number, okay? So I'm going to tell you this. R2 would equal 55 centimeters, and of course you cannot leave it in centimeters. You have to write 0.55 meters, okay? R1 would be 45 centimeters, always measured from the center, by the way, but I don't think it ever really comes up. They always just give you those, and that would equal 0.45 meters, okay? Now here's the, here's the weird part. Um, because this is a negative charge, okay, as my object moves from R2, let's say it's moving out here from R2 to R1 like that, okay, um, if it's moving in that direction, you're going to get a loss of potential. And the reason why it's a loss is because what kind of charge are we sticking here? Well, we're putting a positive test charge. Well, that positive test charge that we're sticking here and it's moving over there is attracted to this. So this is attractive to my test charge, okay? And so if it's attractive and they're attracting each other, just like gravity, if you drop an object, let's say close to the earth, it's attracted to this, so it gets closer to it. Well, here this object's gonna get closer just naturally. And as it gets naturally closer to it, you're gonna lose potential energy in the process. And you'll gain kinetic, it'll speed up, right, let's see. Okay, so the deal is you have to understand that that will be a loss. But if you're going the other way, if you're going that way, if you start at R1 here and move out to R2, then that's a gain in that direction. And see, so the sign on planet charge here on our Van der Graaff machine, the sign on this charge is very important. You have to be able to make this decision, right? Now there's a little, you know, I mean, I, that's all I can tell you about it. You have to sort of think about it and say, all right, is it gonna be a gain or a loss here? Now, had this been a, pot, we'll do a positive charge in a second. Had it been a positive charge, it flips. You get a gain when you push them together. It takes effort because they repel. So for them to get closer, they don't naturally get closer. You have to push them together. 
So they will gain in potential. It's almost like squeezing a spring as they get closer, but they'll lose in potential as they get further apart. Okay, so everything changes if that charge that you're measuring around is a positive instead of a negative. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take care of this problem here first. And what I'm going to ask you for is just what is the voltage? What is the change? And I'm sorry. For some reason, Netflix just started. So the change in electric potential is equal to K Q2 times 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. All right. So you get gain or loss depending on what direction is going. So let's say we start at R2 and we go to R1. Okay. Well, if we're starting at 55 and going to 45, you would write K okay, times 5 times 10 to the negative 6 because that is Q2, that thing. Here you're only putting imaginary test charges there. Okay. And you're going to go like this. You're going to go 1 over. 0 0.55, pardon me, got that backwards, 0 0.45 minus 1 over 0 0.55. Now you have to put a negative sign in there because you have to recognize that if you're going to go from R1 to R2, uh, or sorry, from R2 to R1, if you're going from 55 to 45 centimeters, then this negative sign represents the loss. So you have to physically put it in yourself. The formula won't tell you that. Okay, so this is 9 times 10 to the 9, right? Times 5 times 10 to the negative 6 times... Here, let's work it out. I should put my negative sign in. All right. 0.45. Minus 0.55. It doesn't seem right. Minus point. Okay, so I get what's in the brackets here is 0 0.404. Okay, approximately, I'm rounding it a little. Now I'm going to times that by 9 times 10 to the 9 times 5 exponent 6. Meter. I get 18,000. Negative 18,182 volts. Okay. And why is the number so large? Well, it's because that charge, as small as it is, five microcoulombs, is a huge amount of charge, actually. Okay. The Van Graaff machine has hundreds of thousands of volts of potential. Okay. That thing that you stick your hand on and your hair stands up is a massive source of electric potential very, very high voltages. That's why it's so dangerous to put your computer or your phone on it, as this kind of voltage would really do some damage to, to micro circuits and electronics, okay? Now, by the way, if instead you go from 45 to 55 centimeters, you get therefore a gain in potential, okay? And everything is going to be exactly the same, but the answer for the voltage, the change in voltage, is going to be positive 18182 volts. It's a bit confusing, right, with the negatives and positives. Gravity was easy. It was a, a loss if they got closer. It was a gain if they get further away, right? So it's a bit confusing with this. If I make that a positive 5 microcoulombs, then these two answers would be the same numbers again. Okay, so like if I go from, like if this charge was a positive 5 microcoulombs instead of a negative 5, then this one would be positive and that one would be negative. Okay, so anyway, that's question number or letter B. Okay, now letter C. Um, letter C, okay. Uh, for letter C, I'm going to give you one that's a little strange. Um, all right. Here. 
I know this question's in the book, so I'm going to give you one like this. And by the way, the answer I think is wrong in the book. Well, it is wrong if you have the same answer I have. But I don't know. I haven't checked the online book. All right. Let's say this is positive 4 microcoulombs. Let's say, and we'll call that Q1. Let's say Q2 here is positive 6 microcoulombs. Okay. And let's say this one, okay, is Q3, and we'll make it negative 4 microcoulombs. All right. Now, this whole thing forms, these charges are arranged in a triangle. Let's say we had three Van de Graaff machines. And let's say this is two meters, this is two meters, and oh, what the heck, we'll make that one two meters also. All right, now they're gonna ask a question like this. Okay, so here's your triangle. You've got these three charges laid out, let's say on the table, okay? And what they'll say is, what is the total electric potential in the system? Now, so what? is the total potential. Again, apologize for my handwriting. I'm like basically lying down here. So what is the total potential? So here's the deal with that. There, notice they didn't use the word energy. So has to be voltage, right? And what they're looking for is this. K, Q over R, okay? It's like the binding energy, okay? Now, what you have to do basically, they have to give you a spot in order to do this question. So let's say we'll put a point on this picture. We'll put that point right there. I shall color the rainbow. Put it right there. We'll call that point P. So what is the total potential at P, at my point P? And what they mean to say is how much potential energy. Okay, if we bring in a little test charge here, how many how much how many joules per coulomb of potential is there right there at that spot? Now, here's what you do. You're bringing, okay, what you have to do is pretend that you're bringing in your test charge, these charges, okay, like your test charge is sitting there, and then you're bringing in these charges from a very great distance away and bringing them close to your test charge, okay, and arrange in this picture. And what you do is just do them one at a time. Okay, I'm going to actually start with, so here's my solution. I'm going to start with doing um, V2. Okay, so that's the, sort of the easiest one. So I'm going to do that right now. So V2 would be KQ2 over R2. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this picture. So let's pretend that the only charge in the picture is Q2. Okay, let's just pretend that's that's the only one there. Okay, and then we'll bring in the other ones one at a time. Well, the distance between these two guys, that's R2, and R2 is gonna be half of our triangle because I picked my midpoint of my side here. So it's one meter, okay? So now I'm gonna ignore these other two charges and I'm gonna say, okay, how much potential is there just because of that single charge? Well. You're going to go 9 times 10 to the 9 times, what did I say it was? 4 microcoulombs, I think. 6 microcoulombs, okay. Times 6 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1 squared, okay? Now, it's going to be positive. How do I know it's positive? Well, let's go back to our little picture. See, what am I putting at point P? What kind of charge? And the answer to that question is always a positive test charge, always. So this guy is positive also. So notice I emphasize the positive sign. So if they're both positive, if I bring Q2 in from infinity and bring it really close to point P, is that a gain or a loss? Well, they, they repel. So it's going to be a gain in potential, okay? So this one, is a gain okay now let's just plug that into a calculator i'm so lazy was it going to be 70 72 100 or something okay nine exponent nine times six exponent six negative 
Oh, sorry, 54. What was I thinking? 5,400. Yeah, of course. 9 times 6 is 54. It's 54,000, pardon me, volts. Okay. So that is your first potential, 54,000 volts. Now we're going to do the same thing for Q3. And that's going to be KQ3 over R3, right? So I look back, back at my picture again. Well, it looks like R3 is also one meter, okay? Because it's still a meter away from that guy too. And this time though, this is a negative charge. That means it's going to attract my positive test charge. And that means as I bring that charge in from infinity, now I'm bringing this other guy in, this negative four guy. As you bring it in from really far away, it's gonna lose potential as it gets closer. So this one, is going to be a loss. So let me write it like this. Oops. It's going to be k 9 times 10 to the 9 times 4 times 10 to the negative 6. That's what q6, q3 is, sorry. Times divided by 1. It's not 1 squared. Pardon me. I don't know what I was thinking. You don't square it in energy or voltage. It's not square. It's not force. Force, you square it. Okay. So, sorry to confuse you, but yeah, it's not squared. All right, so here's the deal. I have to put, and I'm gonna emphasize it with the rainbow, I have to put the negative sign in because it's a loss. Now here's the deal. Remember I was telling you you should never put the sign of the charge in the formula? Well, I was right about that. Nine times out of 10, that's gonna steer you wrong. But in this case, it doesn't. So if that's negative, which it is, you therefore get a loss now, I still say don't put the negative sign in. Just put the, you, because you know the material, you know it's a loss if that charge happens to be, it's Q3, happens to be a negative number, which it is, then you're going to get a loss in potential. Again, a question like this. All right. So let's finish it. 9 times 4 is, I'm going to embarrass myself. What's 9 times 4? 36. So it's 36,000. Negative 36,000 though, volts. Now, the only one left is my charge at the top of the triangle. So I've taken care of two of them. What about my third charge? Well, my third charge, I have to figure this out. My third charge, I'll use my rainbow color again. This is R1. And R1 forms one of the sides of a right angle triangle. So I have to figure out what R1 is, how far away that is from point P. That's easy, right? So let's do that here. R1 will equal the square root of two squared minus one squared. So four minus one is three, so it's the root of three, okay? And therefore, V1 will equal K, K, Q1 over R1. Looks like a 2 over R1, like that. This is positive, and therefore, V1 will equal 9 times 10 to the 9. It was 4 times 10 to the negative 6, right? That charge at the top of the triangle, positive 4 microcoulombs. Ugh. Screen won't even scroll for me. Okay, so times 4 times 10 to the negative 6, and then divided by root of 3. Not squared. Okay, not squared this time. And it's going to be plus. So if the charge is positive, then so is your uh, voltage. Okay, 9 exponent 9 times 4 exponent 6 negative divided by the root of 3, I get 20,784. So this equals 2785, actually. And it's positive. All right, now we've done the hard part. We just use the formula three times. It's actually not very hard, though. I know it's weird. I know it's weird, guys. But not. I wouldn't say hard. I would just say weird. So now to find the total voltage in the system of point charges, you guessed it, 
just add them together. Okay, now I have uh, one of those numbers stored in memory already, so I'll just go plus 54,000 and then plus a negative, so and I get 38. volts okay and so that pretty much covers it there's some questions on parallel plates you can ignore that for now and please believe me when I say that there's a question like this in the textbook I, I think I can pretty much guarantee it comes up every year that the answer in the book is wrong but my method what we're doing here is correct it's easy it's correct okay so have a little faith in yourself there are a few answers in this segment of the textbook that are incorrect. Don't let that discourage you or think you're doing it wrong. Like when you get a few answers that are incorrect, everyone thinks they're doing it wrong. You're not. Okay. So where does that leave us? Well, we are now here. So we did these three. Okay. And if you look at it, we just have two left. Now I might get to um, the oil drop experiment this week. This is actually quite short. And this one, there's only four questions here. So I think I will later in the week do the parallel plate. Okay. And then we just have one lesson left. And then we should have a test early uh, next week. All right, then. So signing off. And um, I think you guys have a lot of potential. So, uh, yeah. Okay, make sure you get this done. All right, I'll see you later.